Hi everybody, Zach here, and welcome to the recap for section 3 of the RTS tutorial series. In this section, we set up our resources, our resource spawner, and our resource HUD. So fire up your editor, and I'll see you on the other side. Here we are back in our editor, and as always, you can tell I've kind of recorded this after um, starting section four. So just quickly going over what we have, we have set up our spawner, so we can see we already have two trees spawned in. You can see we're getting more rocks to spawn in, and we did some cleanup. So let's quickly go over what we've done. So the first thing we did was import our meshes and set them up. So we added color to that, we added a texture to that, we added a texture to the rock as well. We also set up our resource master BP, which contains all of the information about our resource. So off the construction script, we get, is this a random level? So the level will determine how much a resource is worth, and it will pick a variable within here. Actually, as I'm looking at this, we're gonna have to clean this up. There is something missing. I don't have something that, uh, oh, sorry, if it is random, it's right here. If it is random, it picks a value between one and six, and it selects it. This will increase the value of the resource. We then have a random size, which changes the size of the texture, there, or sorry, of the mesh we're using. And then we have random rotation, which changes a rotation of the individual mesh. So each one of these will change an individual aspect of the, of a, say, a tree. So it's one tree in our spawn area, you know, will potentially have a modifier of 1.8. Another one might have a 1.6. Um, also, an individual tree will have a random size. So the trees will all look different, or the rocks will all look different. This information is passed on to the individual children resources, these two uh, blueprints here. Children inherit the qualities of their parent. We also created a volume, these two boxes here that we saw in play, that spawn in our resources. So if we take that and we open it up, we can see how that's set up. So we have two conditions. We can either spawn on begin play, and what happens is if it spawn on begin play, it automatically begins spawning a set number of resources based on the resource we've asked it to spawn. It then calculates the total number spawned in and then checks, you know, are we going to spawn this a, in the future? Is it going to be respawned or is it going to be spawned later? If so, it initiates a timer. This timer is set down here. And then it sets the timer within this function, which we have a few options to pick from. This is exposed so that the developer setting this up can pick. Is it something that's paused? Is it based on the game speed only? Is it a custom value, or is it a custom value times the game speed? That information is then passed on to the spawn event itself. So if we go back up here for a second, we can see that it's resource spawn on timers to create that event, which is this down here. This event tick is just in case you wanted to plug other things in from this delta at seconds. So it checks. First off, you know, is the game paused? If so, we're just going to stop spawning things. If not, it checks, is there area for the stuff to spawn in? And is it set to spawn on a timer? If so, it then spawns in the resources like it did on the event begin play. To set this all up, we need to get the game speed, though. And when I say to set this all up, I mean to set up a respawn timer. To get the game speed, this part here, these two nodes, just keep the game speed up to date in this blueprint based on the changes we make to it. So when we hit the faster or slower buttons on our HUD, this updates as well. We have to initiate or initialize our game, initial game speed from our game state reference, which we get through here. So we bind it to the event that controls it, which sends it down here, but we then initialize it up here. And then we set the respawn timer once we do set it again just to be on the safe side down here. We have a couple of reference casts to make this work. So we reference our controller to get that information, we, or to see the changes in the HUD. We reference our game state to get the actual game time. 
So remember, this is how we get the information, is the game paused? This is how we get our game speed. And we also did some cleanup, which is in the last video. And in that video, I did a fair amount of covering various topics, but that's a, a different, uh, that's a video you should watch separate from this one. Another thing we did in this was we set up our resource HUD, which, sorry, open the other window, just tells us our resource values. Now, sorry, I didn't pin in correctly. Now, this has no functionality. In fact, we'll get functionality in about two sections when we do resources and units together. We did also in our player controller, if we go into that for a second, set up our resource inventory. So this resource inventory is how much ore, wood uh, the person has, and the max amount they can have. So if you only have, let's say for storing it in silos, um, you only have one stylo, you might only be able to store, you know, 10 units of ore. I'm just picking a random number, by the way. So this will be set to 10 or be, uh, or increase, sorry, and increase based on the number of silos we have. There are different ways to sort of conceptualize or to execute this element. All right, that said, a little bit later today, I'll be uploading the video that covers how we are going, or the introduction of our um, fourth section, which will cover setting up units. That said, I hope you can drop some comments down below to let me know what you'd like to see. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask those as well. And remember, there is a Discord channel I have. The link is in the bottom of every video. And because I've already pre-recorded the uh, video for the start of uh, introduction of section uh, three, make sure to download, sorry, section four, make sure to download the unit portraits that I have a link to as well. I forgot to mention that in that video. Sorry about that. Um, and please, if you enjoyed the series, drop a like down below so, this, uh, so I know I'm bringing you content you appreciate and so the series makes it to more people because it really helps this channel get out there. And... I hope to see you in the next section, and as always, I hope that you have a wonderful day.